You want me to take the wheel, you can go eat. Ooh, I like that. I just joked about taking the wheel. I have no idea what, what to do. <laughs> what? You said take the wheel. What? I thought you were licensed. I said, Jesus, take the wheel. Oh, Jesus, take said, the wheel. Carrie, the Carrie, take the wheel. experienced some snow last night so we got snow down to the beaches plan for today's unsure we're gonna go out we have a noon check-in to see if we're gonna motor up a couple hours to a different spot or if we're gonna stay here so we're gonna go out until noon at least and uh, hopefully get on a deer um, I think I believe it's gonna be me Brian, Brian Dylan in a group and uh, this is fun Brian's holding the camera and I'm holding the rifle that don't happen too often so stick around things might get a little interesting All right, you guys, just kind of been working our way down this beach. Um, Brian spotted a doe up on these benches, uh, pretty high, probably like 700 feet in elevation. And uh, Buck just stood up and Brian laid eyes on him. He's getting some phone scope right now. He said stud shooter buck, which is uh, what we like to hear. Check this phone scope out. Oh, there's another one right there. That's what I was looking at. See, that's the buck right there, that good yeah. guy. Look at. Look at that frame. Yeah, he's a good one. I knew, I knew there was a buck in that group. It just had to be. That looks like they're at like 750 on the map. Yeah, right when we were rolling in, I was like, this bush is bad. Eh? It's an island now, straight up. Yeah. That group of deer is on the sliver with two really deep cuts on each side and so it's kind of pointless going up there unless there's a good buck and uh it appears to be so that there's a good buck maybe even another buck in there which i think is possible shooter yeah. buck so uh whoever there. glasses up the big buck gets to shoot him is that the way this thing works whoever spots a buck gets to shoot it yeah well you owe me one buddy <laughs> glass <laughs> not see at 12 yards <laughs> We were just looking at Onyx because it's nice and open up here. I'm trying to find this opening. And Logan's literally like, dude, buck, 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 coming in. This buck was like coming to us. It got back quite pretty quick. Yeah, it did. They're right up in here. Oh, really? Which is on the right hand side. So if we got up there and it didn't work, we could just push north. Push over. But like, here's the 500 band and here's the 1000, and they're like right, right in the middle. Did you get some good video? Do you want to look at him, guys? Yeah, I can yeah. do. Yeah, that's 
Okay. Yeah, on about two hundred feet from the issue. I say we just work up that side through those pop cars. All right, well, the plan is getting matched. Uh, that buck is definitely a stud. Looks to be like a three to four year old buck. Kind of the same type of buck as the one I got yesterday and the one uh, Josh got a couple days ago. He looks pretty content. He's on this face uh, with probably like eight does and he's just back and forth, checking them, lip curling them, smelling them, acting real ruddy. We're gonna risk it and go on th this side, our side of this big, deep, rocky kind of cut and see if we can kind of shoot across. We'll have better wind, we'll have the sun at our back. The challenge might be navigating over to the deer across this like big chute, but we'll figure that out when we get up there. So anyways, time to pack up off the beach and start heading up the mountain. Well, guys, we're trying to pick our way to get up on these benches. There's a big gnarly ravine right here. The deer's actually on the other side of it, but we're hoping that if we get enough elevation, it won't be as aggressive. That's what we're seeing on the maps. So the only real option up through these alder suckers is right so, which doesn't look awesome. I think it might be wise to strap this to a pack. I also think we're gonna want ice picks and cleats like Brian brought, and I thought about. Guys, I, uh, I brought these micro spikes, just in the case. I'm jealous, because I have a pair at home, and I looked at them, and I put them back down, so I probably won't need these. I'm, I'm jealous because I saw my old metal baseball cleats, <laughs> the Hiroshis, and I was like, should I bring these? And then I put them down. That might be a little chilly. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna have to get up through. Maybe. Not the worst, not the best. Wish us luck, right? It's possible. Doug? I just don't want to sling this gun and hit the ground. I'm going to see what it's like. Go ahead, give her a test dip. Just remember, Logan, sacrifice your body, not, not the gun. So we just got up here to elevation, spotted one doe, and she's about 300 yards from us right now. Um, but we haven't turned up the buck or the other, I think five or six does in here. So it's pretty thick, but we actually have some shooting lanes. So if he steps out, I think we could lay down and get a really good shot, 300 and in it looks like. We'll say fingers crossed he comes back out. So he's just been running, checking does, super ready. We have one doe right here. I think I can see another doe up in the trees. And that buck's still gotta be right here. Unless maybe he took a doe into another patch, but I like our odds. We started way at the bottom. We're up here now. We're with we're in shooting range of the does, so who knows? All right, guys. We got up here to uh, basically the same elevation that we saw the buck this morning. We've seen a few of his does. Kind of know where they're bedded. I climbed up a little higher, and I really think this is the place to be. So we're having a bit of a debate. Logan and Dylan are being stubborn, and they're down the ridge from me. They don't want to come up here because they feel like they are in the best spot. Let me show you what I think is the best spot. Okay, we saw the buck on that knob. There's a couple does bed over here, but the last movement we saw him, which he's done twice, he came up and over this knob. There's a bunch of heavy cover right here, a big ravine, so we could shoot 250 yards straight across. We could shoot up to 300 and then up to 400 if he came out that way. We could also glass this other country and then a couple steps away, we can glass all of this other country. So in my opinion, super efficient, pretty much 180 degrees of hunting as we patiently wait to see if that buck comes out. Okay, so that's scenario one. Let me go hike down now to Logan and Dylan who are being stubborn. 
can show you scenario two and uh, love to hear your opinion in the comments. Welcome to scenario two. Let me show you what this one's working with. About 50 feet lower in elevation where we saw the buck again on the knob. Uh, you can shoot a little further to the right, slightly more to the left, but you're dealing with much more cant in the rifle, shooting different elevation. And there's really nothing behind you to occupy your time. Like I said up top, just let us know in the comments which scenario would you select? Let me guess the top. That's like a nice beach and a smoothie maker. And is there, a is there like... Is there a hot tub up top? Okay guys, you want to make a bet. Is there a big buck up top? Would you like to make a bet? Yes. Okay, so if, if that buck that we saw appears anywhere from where he was bedded on that tree yeah. to the left, I get to shoot him. That doesn't if, sound like a bet. That's if he's... Not... If he's anywhere bending. left, if he comes out anywhere left of that knob, I get to shoot him. If he comes out right where you guys are looking at with these does, you guys get to shoot him. Well, we're looking all, all over this. Yeah. Do you know where he's at? Do you have an ace in the hole? Just, just ask him. I feel like you walked up there and you probably saw him. That's what I said when you went up there. I was like, he's going to go up there, find the buck, and not have a rifle. I feel like I'm going to say no to the bet, but I'm really going to focus on the left side of the tree he was bedded. I don't even care who shoots the buck. I just yeah, want this buck to I die. just want, yeah, it's a great buck. It needs to get. If we kill this buck, it'll be really rad. There is a doe. I did see a doe. Yeah, we had, a, we had a doe going to the trees. We've got a doe out in the open right now and a doe way up on the side, though. Brian, just tell us what you know. We're all I a team. I feel like you saw him up there. I feel like we're all a team. Brian definitely saw him up there. You guys feel comfortable with where you're at? Don't you ever want to know, like, man, what's on the back side of that ridge? Is it worth it? Is there a buck? Uh, this has turned more fun than I expected. <laughs> we'll see how this one plays out, folks. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Where'd you set up? Scenario one, scenario two. We'd love to know your opinions. Uh, good morning, Matt here. We're gonna do a little duck hunt. We got some golden eyes harlequins, buffalo heads. Just got the decoys set up. So we've got a long line of decoys. Garrett just went to hide the boat. So we're on this little point here. Hopefully we'll get some golden eyes. A little duck hunt in this morning. Snowed last night, so hoping to go chase some deer this afternoon. Hopefully get some video here for you guys. I'm gonna get the gun loaded. <laughs> well, I think that was on video. I think I dropped the camera. And uh, just got a Drake Buffalo head. Swung around. But we're sitting right here in the decoys. Got a whole bunch of islands here. Here comes one right here. Get ready. <laughs> oh, we got it upside down. Uh -huh. Got a couple of birds down so far. Bufflehead. Drake. So these are Drake Bufflehead, pretty common throughout the U.S. Um, both freshwater and a coastal duck. So don't get too many colored up like this in Montana. Got four more Drake barrels golden eyes down. We'll go pick up some of those and show you what they look like. Beautiful morning, perfect spot. So we got a strategy here is a whole bunch of mussel beds. You can see all the mussels. Makes me hungry, and ducks too. So we got this chain of islands here. This is all island on this side. We got a channel right through here. So we're at low tide and this will keep filling and filling and. The ducks will keep coming in to feed on the mussels. There was about a hundred here when we pulled up this morning. But pretty soon this will all be underwater. We're gonna move up here under the rocks and uh, get after it. Let's go pick up some of these ones. That beauty, look at those colors. Barrel's golden eye. These are definitely a coastal duck. Not too many go inland. A couple pockets here and there. In Montana, when we're hunting for golden eyes, you might get one out of 500, that's a Barrows. But here on the coast, this is where they live. This is their specialty. It's decoying perfect. But we're gonna go sit back and get some more. You wanna wake the one behind it?
regular ducks. So you can shoot seven regular ducks, seven sea ducks a day. So golden eyes and buffalo heads are regular ducks. So I got six drink barrels, golden eyes, one drink buffalo head. And now Garrett is gonna be up. Film a couple more. How'd that go, Garrett? Well, you made that look really easy. <laughs> that was fun. That went, that was awesome. A lot of singles, yeah. which is perfect. Yeah, less chaos. So we're using long lines here, clip the decoys on, anchor it at both ends, makes it super easy. Make a string, come right in, decoy good. It decoy really well, it decoyed really well this morning. Yeah. I should say. Yeah, that was yeah. perfect. I can do this without dropping the phone. Another drink. Yep. <laughs> I gotcha. A little feather broke off. That makes a better shot. Look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. See the color on them. That guy's about pinned out. What you see is those little freckles. It's kind of just showing you that he's still pinning out or just a younger bird. Yeah. Oh, some of the ones that you got earlier. Yeah. You'll see, notice they're absolutely jet white. Yep. And that's perfect. That's a fully, fully mature, fully plumed out bird. <laughs> so we uh, ended up agreeing on situation number one and uh, Dylan's picked up a couple deer already. Got some footage right now of this uh, doe and she is just absolutely out bedded here in the phone scope. So you can kind of see our situation. Logan and Dylan are both set up as shooters. Basically all of this country is shootable. I kind of think that buck is somewhere in this patch right here. It's a possibility over here. So we got does over there, does up there. That buck is somewhere right around in here. We're just being super patient. And open uh, at some point in the very near future, he gets up to rebed, or maybe goes and checks a doe, and we get a crack at him. Look to be a really nice three to four year old deer. We're gonna try to wait it out as long as we can. Uh, it's definitely getting chilly. Anytime you get stationary up here, you just immediately turn into an ice box, uh, particularly because we're sitting in snow. So we'll see how long we can wait it out, and then I think our plan, if we don't see him, is we're gonna hike up more elevation cut down and cross over to where we saw them and just kind of hunt our way back down that way. This whole week, the deer have been any, anywhere from like the beach to like 500 feet of elevation, which doesn't sound like a lot in climbing, but this kind of stuff we're walking through is really difficult to traverse. But right now we're at like 650 and we're seeing deer probably upwards of 800 to 1,000 feet of elevation. So we move spots and this new spot, they're obviously quite a bit higher. Didn't really see any sign or track coming up here either. so. This group of deer are just living a little bit higher up on the bench. Anyways, crossing our fingers, we see the big guy and uh, we could punch this tag. It would be a really cool situation. So we spotted him from way down on that point that's almost gone this morning. Dude, that is a pretty fox. His face, are you gonna shoot him? Dude, his face is red. I'm gonna just shoot him. Dang, he's pretty. He's gonna lay down right there. Okay guys, quick update. It's about 2.45 p.m. Uh, we're still sitting up here. Uh, I've been seeing a ton of deer. A couple small bucks, a bunch of does. Haven't seen that big buck, but Dylan just glassed up a freaking giant bear. Bear's like 470 uh, across this ravine. It's kind of working away from us, luckily. Uh, we'll roll a little bit of the phone scope footage. It's not very great, but get a chance to get a quick glimpse of this bear. We're considering shooting a fox that we have bedded here at like 200 yards, and obviously considering shooting these deer, but 
I don't think any of those are a super smart play right now. Uh, these bears in Kodiak are usually pretty solid, like not being aggressive towards people. But where we run into issues is uh, after a kill. If they catch wind of a kill site, they will absolutely try to claim that deer. Garrett said that more than likely, you know, like they're not going to go after you, uh, but they'll certainly bluff charge you to like up to like as close as 15 yards. So we've all got sidearms, we all have rifles, we've got bear spray, but we're a little short on bear spray as a group. So I've got this air horn, which sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but it's all that they had and they've had success using an air horn as a deterrent, surprisingly enough. So I got stuck with the air horn guys. <laughs> Logan's like, may as well be silly string. Maybe you're right, I don't know. We've been super lucky. We've seen a few bears on the trip, but nothing crazy. Anyways, that got the old heart pumping. Uh, these bears are, they're wild here. They're absolutely wild, so. <sighs> not sure what to do. We'll probably bounce out of here relatively fast now, because it just would not be safe trying to get a deer over there, to be honest. All right, blue cheese ranch. All right, you guys, we've had a heck of a day. Here's Brian. Uh, dinner time, guys. We got salads, some steak, some beans, some bacon. Uh, Brando's dealing with some like nosebleed issues tonight, so we're just, you know, we're helping out, uh, doing our share to just be a part of the team. But uh, Garrett cooked up the steaks, and we are finishing off another amazing evening with Nail Chick Charters. We haven't really said much, but if you guys are ever looking into doing something similar to this, definitely want to check out and ask for Garrett and Brandon. Uh, they also have another boat, Johnny and Daniel. We don't know those guys super well, but I'm sure they do equally as fine of a job. Uh, but look them up, check it out. It's been a fantastic hunt today. It was super cool. Another bear encounter, another big buck, more deer. Guys shot some ducks. Uh, we've got one more full day and then a little half day travel day. So we'll see what else we can get into, but appreciate you guys following along on this Alaskan adventure. I don't know what day it is, but uh, Logan and I are having an absolute <laughs> incredible time and uh, can't, wait, can't wait to share this with everyone at home. So you guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.